So when I heard that Kanye West got saved, I was like, what? Who? How? Why? When? Because it just, I don't know. Something about that just felt, I don't know. <clears throat> and it wasn't really that I was judging Kanye. I was glad that he was saved, especially after he changes his old music genre into church music and starts having services all over Hollywood and all that stuff. And then shortly after the so-called salvation, um, when Stark Raving Mad and, or maybe, I don't know, and then started making worldly music again and all the salvation seems to have disappeared. Uh, when Justin Bieber got saved and then was walking around with his pastor and singing worship music everywhere, it was so wonderful. I think the church got on a real high when Justin is singing um, all these great worship songs with Hillsong and all the other great churches. And it, I guess, felt validating to much of the younger generation of Christians to know that somebody so famous and A-listing like Justin Bieber or Kanye would believe in Jesus. And then they too, of course, he too went back to his old ways and Christianity is not even an option or it doesn't seem like a part of his life anymore. So what happens to the church? What happens to us in America, to you and to me, preacher girls who believe in Christ and we've believed, you know, with our hearts and our minds and our soul. It's not just a fad for us. It's not because somebody has taught us something that we didn't know before or we got in so much trouble or got addicted to drugs that we fell into Christ. It's not that. It's because we really had an encounter with the one true God and something that's real in our lives that it made it matter. So today, I want to talk about that for a little bit. Why is it that so many A-list personalities and stars are getting saved, becoming Christian? And why is it that so many A-list Christians are becoming non-Christians? Why do we think that is? Because I don't believe that that's ordinary. I don't believe that that's a natural thing. I think it's a supernatural bit of warfare that we need to talk about for a little bit. So hi, my name is Pastor Sharo. I'm the senior pastor of Hope NYC. And this vlog and podcast is called The Preacher Girl Podcast. If you've never been here before, I encourage you to stick to the end and subscribe and like this video. We talk about all kinds of great things. And today, I guess one of my favorite topics these days is what is going on in Hollywood, especially when it pertains to Jesus Christ. So let me tell you what triggered this. Russell Brand, who is one of the podcasters and vloggers that I listen to, um, you might know him. He used to be that crazy guy in Hollywood that used to act the raunchiest of movies. Um, was he married to, to Drew Barrymore at some point? Was it him? To Katy Perry. He was married to somebody famous. I don't know very well. All I know is I couldn't really watch his movies because some of them were just too out there. They weren't PG and stuff like that. Anyway, all of a sudden he disappears from Hollywood, right? He's blacklisted, I guess, or he drops out of the Hollywood mainstream and he starts this podcast on YouTube. I start listening to it because, not because we have the same values. He was very um, existential, more coming from the new age uh, religion rather than Christianity. He didn't believe in Christ at all, but he was a new ager. But some of the things that he was saying, especially in a socio-political context, I was listening because I was amazed that somebody in Hollywood who had made millions of dollars and been with the movie stars and all the important people had the guts to stand up against mainstream media. I wanted to hear what he had to say, but he, because he was calling out the news media for being liars, one, and for refusing to speak the truth. He was giving a different opinion from Hollywood and getting so much heat from all of the A-listers in Hollywood and MSNBC and all the people that seem to matter and their, their opinions matter most to the upcoming generation. He was dif different in thought from all of academia, which these days I'll give you my honest opinion for a second because it is, does happen to be my vlog. I think that academia has gone nuts and we have come to the place where in the Bible it says that in the last days men will call what is good evil and what is evil good. I turned on YouTube the other day to see the most disturbing video at Columbia University where the people there were chanting 
I am Hamas. The word Hamas is a terrorist word that has not changed. And when an a, a, a institution of higher learning in the United States of America would associate and identify with terrorism, with people who murder and rape and burn children and women alive, then something is wrong in our society and nobody will say anything. Have you seen this? In fact, the general media will take a speech and cut it up so dishonestly and will misquote politicians, misquote their enemies, say someone said what, what they never said, especially not in the context that the media is presenting it. And then all of America, especially the younger generations that will refuse to watch the whole speech, would take all of their cues from a 30 second clip chosen by a biased media, you know? So Russell Brand was going against the grain and really not necessarily coming against the media as much as he was listening to the whole speech. He was giving the true story in many instances without jumping to biased conclusions based on a pre imagined or preconceived notion, but he was listening to both sides of every story and having hard conversations across the board. Now, let me tell you what they do in mainstream media. They call it hard conversations and finding truth. But if you dare to disagree with them, they will talk over you. They will refuse to let you speak. I've been so embarrassed as I watch people misquote pe other people uh, on the news or, or have interviews to find truth and never allow people to speak because their opinions were different. And Russell Brand was listening to the whole speech, analyzing the whole thing, sitting down with people with differing opinions. And, you know, and I'm not saying that I agreed with everything he was saying. I'm just saying I'm okay with having conversations. I'm okay with hearing both sides of the story. It doesn't mean I have to change you or you have to change me, but everybody deserves a listen. I think everybody deserves to hear truth and make their decisions based on truth, whatever happened to that notion. And so that's why my eyes were on him. Well, recently, about two weeks ago, I think, there was the weirdest um, post on his podcast. Russell Brand was gonna get baptized. And you would swear it said that Russell Brand was turning into some sort of Nazi because the world went crazy, especially Hollywood. Because all of a sudden, nothing he said against them before was enough to make them hate him. But the fact that he was going to be baptized based, by the way, on his own convictions was enough to cause them to blacklist him officially. I heard one person say, I read a comment um, from one very popular politician that said, I used to think even though we disagreed and sat on, on opposite sides, that at least you were a sensible man. But now I know that all you want to do is believe in an imaginary genie. And I was thinking, wow, these are the same people who are saying, you know, there's a possibility that aliens are out there. And so, okay. And then I read another um, post from a, a pretty popular political commentator is, I guess, a, a good word to call her. And she's a vlogger. You've seen her on social media. And um, a lot of people know Candace Owens and you either like her or you hate her, right? I'm not here to tell you which one you need to do. But I heard that she just converted, converted to Catholicism. She got fired from her gig, as you guys know, because of one statement with three words, Christ is King. And apparently in the America we live in, to have an opinion that Christ is King is enough to get you fired. And people still be believe that we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'll tell you where we live. We live in a country where to say Christ is King can get you fired. But we also live in a place that if somebody kills you for saying something against Allah, people will protest in their favor and against you. That's not freedom and that's not true. That's not equality by any stretch of anybody's imagination. 
If people would just do the research and go back into history and look, they would realize and they would learn that Hamas, Hezbollah, that all, most of the terrorist regimes that we've come to know since 9-11 and post, that the roots of all of that, if you were to go back, go all the way back to close ties with Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf and the Nazi regime, it would, it, they even converted his work into Arabic. They became allies because they had a common enemy, a tiny little nation of people called Jews. Doesn't that strike you as strange? That a tiny little nation boasting a few million people would outlive Babylon, would outlive the Roman Empire, that would outlive the Egyptian empires, outlive Greece, outlive Germany, and the Reich, the Third Reich. You know why? Not because they had great philosophy, not because they had great politicians, but they served a great God, and they still do. The only reason why the Jews still exist today is because Jehovah has kept them alive. Anyway, I digress, back to what I was talking about. So Candace Owens, Candace Owens becomes a Catholic. Russell Brand gets baptized. Jordan Peterson's wife also converts to Catholicism this past couple weeks. And a lot of people are asking, are they drinking something weird? What is happening? Why are people turning to Jesus Christ? What is this thing? And I have a few opinions. I have a few reasons why I think so many famous people are starting to turn to Jesus. And I thought, I would just let you know and see what you think and hear your opinions. Because let me let me show you what's happening. I think the scales, the scales are getting very, um, they're moving in the opposite direction to where they were. Because a few years ago, it's the simple minds that would come to Jesus. It's those of us who were broken, those of us who needed a savior, those of us who didn't trust our own selves. So we needed to trust in someone that was higher, better, more righteous, and able to save us, those of us who were sick and needed a healer, those of us who were broken and needed putting back together. We were the simple ones and, and we were the ones that came to Jesus. And, and so the, the, the whole world knew that it's the simple minds that love Jesus, the ones that believe simple things like there are two genders, the ones that believe in simple things like the sanctity of life and that killing unborn babies is still murder. The simple people. We are the ones that came to Jesus, right? And so Christianity became the religion of the simple-minded. But then something else happened. Because we were so simple-minded, then people who call themselves intelligent, and that's academia, and people who have PhDs, and further, and more than one, when they tell us that what we believe is simple, and then they said, actually, you were not created by God, but you evolved. You evolved from an amoeba, actually, and everything else you see, including trees, monkeys, animals, and people, evolved from that same one amoeba after a big bang happened, and then they sold that to us as fact. And then we were simple because we chose not to believe that, but to believe the infallible word of God, which is the Bible, which has never been proven wrong. I think those scales are tipping because now the simple minds have decided that we will follow the direction of media, we will follow the direction of popular opinion, of human secularism, and instead of believing in Jesus, we start believing in ourselves. We start the pursuit of money instead of the pursuit of happiness and truth, of righteousness and truth. It's happiness and money, righteousness and truth. We've chosen money. But then what has happened on the other side is that the earth still groans. The Bible said that the earth groans for the revelation of sons and daughters. So. In the, it also says this, it says in the last day, the love of many will get cold. And we've seen that happen. After COVID, which caused such a coldness in the love of many, lots of churches never even opened back up. Do you know that churches stayed closed? Some people never change their pajamas since 2019 because they're still watching church on the couch. They can work from home. Why not worship from home, right? So people lost faith and they lost their dedication to their faith, to their churches, to their, the church family, to the organization and the body of Christ, as it were. They lost that. And so the Bible says in the last days, you'll see a, a falling away of many. While, by the way, the churches were shrinking, guess what else was happening? High profile preachers and pastors were tum tumbling from the highest heights. All of a sudden, the people with the most impact, the people with the 
potential to destroy more people in their faith than any others. Any of the others were being publicly humiliated, called out for transgressions, moral failure, things like that. And they were collapsing right before our very eyes. And the church was seeming to have one blow after the other. And because we were born of a simple faith, because we were simply saved, then we simply backslid. And because our encounter with God was not a radical transformational evolutionary transformation that changed who we were in the process of being born again as a new creature, because it wasn't that, we easily fell away. So you know what happened? A lot of people just left the faith. But that doesn't mean that the earth is still not expecting sons and daughters to be revealed, which is why it brings me to what I see happening in mainstream Hollywood and the people who are more popular. Even as plenty of people stop believing in Jesus, I've seen so many people who are famous or people who are believers become famous and letting the world know that they don't care if you call me a fool. I don't care if you don't believe. I don't care that you say I'm simple-minded. I don't care if you think you can put labels on me. It's okay, I still believe in Jesus. And they're so proud to say it. And so one of the reasons I think this, and this is, you know, even as I was thinking about it, I, it was obvious to me that people want something real. Real people want something real. I'm not talking about the fake people we have out there. I'm not talking about the Gucci wearing, starving people who have no money to pay rent. I'm talking about people who can afford everything in the world, has tried everything and realized that sex and money and fame doesn't give you happiness, but there is only happiness in Jesus Christ. That is who's getting saved. The people who realize that drugs and money and, and all the lights in the world can't give you peace of mind like a relationship with Jesus Christ does. I heard Russell Brand say that himself. He said, I can't tell you what happened when I went under that water, but all I know is that I came up knowing that no matter what I go through, God's got me. That's different and that's big because real people want something real. The second reason is because I think that science, materialism, humanism has already, or just recently anyway, it's become mainstream. They're starting to suggest that there's something else out there. Science, if you notice all the movies, right? Not just the movies, but news. It's kind of opening the door a little bit for extraterrestrial life. Isn't that weird? I mean, aren't you like a little bit more open to it now than you were in, let's say, 10 years ago? When, when somebody said something like, E.T., you're busting out laughing, but then you're in the park trying to catch Pokemon at midnight? Because... It was introduced in our society gradually. It was leaked. And now even areas of science, right? They're the ones suggesting that the things that they used to call crazy 20 years ago, which was that that some kind of otherworldly power was used to build things like the pyramids and, 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 and Stonehenge and all of that. Now they're saying, you know, perhaps there is intelligent life out there. Well, there is intelligent life out there. It's what we've been seeing all along. Um, and now that science and mainstream human con um, human consciousness is, is trying to reach something else, it's so ridiculous to me how in Hollywood, right? If you put some mystic Eastern symbol on your body, people think you're cool. But if you say you believe in Jesus Christ, People think you're nuts. Doesn't that strike you as strange? Hmm. People believe in human consciousness, mysticism, demonic doctrines and fallen angels, aliens, artificial intelligence. You might be like, well, artificial intelligence is real. Okay, it is. Of course it is. Everybody's got ChatGPT now, right? But when the movie AI came out, right? We all thought that was science fiction. We all thought like, whoa, as if. Now, people like Elon Musk are getting on, on YouTube and saying, stop them, because they will destroy this planet. It's crazy. Uh, that's the world we live in. We live in a world where people will believe the 
ridiculous rather than believe God. The third reason why I think that so many people are being saved and people in the limelight, famous people are the argument that most wars in the world have been caused by religion. That's what a lot of people say, especially ignorant people, people who've been taught something by media and they can't think for themselves. They say, oh, Christianity has caused most deaths in the world through war. Religion has caused... That's not true. Go do your reading. Read history. War is caused by greed for wealth and land. And yes, some wars have been fought in the name of religion. Yes, many wars, even in the name of Christianity. But most wars are about stuff, territory, property, money, wealth, world dominance. Sometimes it is hidden behind the guise of religion, right? And they say, oh, it's Christians. Even Hitler himself, you know. But how on earth could you say you know Christ? and be like Christ, which is what Christianity is about. And even begin to try to hurt somebody else. You can't do it. Because then you wouldn't be like Christ at all. So now that we know that that particular argument is false, it is a lie, it's fake. Christianity has not caused wars, stupid people use the name of Christ to start wars in the past and to kill people. Yes, that cannot be denied. It's a fact that happened. But Christianity is not the, co the cause of wars. Because that has been negated and that was rhetoric that was fed to our, our, our generations, because we grew up and we started thinking and exploring for ourselves and realized we don't have to swallow everything that we were told, we realized that that's stupid and we have discarded that. And a lot of people in Hollywood are smarter than the majority. And the last thing I thought, it is clear, it is get, getting clearer and clearer to people that the message of Jesus is the message of peace. If you say Jesus taught us how to, to destroy nations and you use the Old Testament examples of Amalekites and and Hittites and Hivites and how the Jews had to go and, and destroy nations. May I just introduce you to Jesus, to Christianity? It was started by this man named Jesus. He was born of a virgin in a stable laid to rest as a baby. He was God incarnate. The fullness of God dwelt in the body of one man who allowed humans to beat him to a pulp, to nail him to a cross. He allowed them to flog him when, listen to this, at any point during his trial, he could have stopped it. One word from him to Pilate. Pilate said, I will let you go if you just say something. And he said nothing. He wouldn't even defend himself. He let them crucify him. And the last thing he asked was that God would forgive them for taking his life the way that they did when he deserved none of that. He washed the feet of his disciples. He told them, love your enemies. Do good to them that hurt you. Pray for them that use you and curse you. That is the Jesus of Christianity. And if people were really Christians, if people were really following him, then we'd know how to love our enemies and how to live like Jesus. And that's why I believe that people who want something real, people who are searching, will find him. Granted, it's really disappointing when Kanye falls off the deep end and when he gets saved and you're hoping against hope that he's really saved, but you know he probably isn't. 
you know, and it's always a little disappointing when you realize that Justin Bieber's faith might not have been based on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. But the power of God is still able to transform lives, still able to change people without hurting others. So Preacher Girls, that's it. It was just a discussion. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know what you think. And can people who are in Hollywood truly be saved? And why people are leaving church and why people are coming to the church and, and why this shift is happening. Why in order to be a Christian in this last days, you have to be, you have to be smart. Anyway, I love you so much. And I want you to remember that if God called you, no one can uncall you. And you don't need a pulpit to preach. You just need a message. Like and subscribe.